everybody. Check out who's here. This, this has been such a fun morning here so far. We've already done one video. This is Jen from Jen Loves Reviews. I mean, we have done bingo with yes. eyeshadows. It was so fun. It stretched us to our limits, I feel, creatively. Yes. So we did these looks. It's a little tease there. Go check it out on Jen's channel. If you're not subscribed to Jen, a lot of you probably are who watch my videos. Reviews, amazing content, honest feedback, a makeup loving person in this community who really cares about informing people the right way. So thank you. We love you, Jen. That. Thank you. I love you. I love you so much. And this is one of those dream come true kind of moments for me, you know, and I said this on my channel as well as I just, I've been watching Emily for years. Like I know a lot of you probably have been watching her for years and years and years. So to be able to come here and film videos with her is amazing. And I will tell you the, the Emily you see in videos that you love is the same Emily that you meet in person. I mean, she's an amazing person and I'm incredibly humble, incredibly humble. And and you I think that so if nice. you met her and you were sitting where I'm sitting, you would love her just as much as you love her from your home. So I just wanted to make sure I threw that out there that you are subscribed to the right person. I mean, just absolutely amazing person. So Well, you are super kind. We said last night, we're just going to have a Jen and Emily love fest. Yes, I know, know, right? I love her. Just totally the real deal. Thank and you. we had a great time having dinner last night and just kind of getting to chat about everything. It was so much fun. Mm -hmm. And in this video, this was Jen's idea um, to do an anti-haul. You've never seen one here on my channel. Here's been my reason why, and I told Jen about this last night, like I haven't done anti-hauls because I feel like sometimes it's so much assumptions about a product and it's like how much information do I really come away with when, you know, the person hasn't tried the product, obviously. Mm -hmm. But there's some real life like aspect to this because this is the thought process we all go through when we decide whether or not to get something. We're going on what we have. Right, absolutely. And I think uh, Kimberly Clark, who was the one that kind of got this mm -hmm. all going, I think that she had the intention of anti-consumerism and mm -hmm. that we don't need everything. There's so much yeah. makeup coming out every single week. Mm -hmm. And you, you can't buy everything. So being picky and choosy about what you're going to buy and why you aren't going to buy something, I think is something to, you know, that I personally mm -hmm. find very interesting. Yeah, and if you, you know, hear us talk about something like look up some reviews like look up the full the full scoop mm -hmm. on some of these things if you're intrigued enough to to do so but it'll be I think fun to hear Jen's take I don't know what she's going to talk about she doesn't know what I'm going to mm -hmm. talk about and maybe some of these things will be something that one or the other of us have tried or yeah, love or absolutely. would recommend and yeah. so you know, we can try to sway one another a little bit here. You can in <laughs> yeah. the comments section. Give yeah. us the info if you know about some of these products. So yeah, we yeah. want to know. Sounds like a plan. You can kick it off, oh, Jen. Okay, okay. Show I'm me how it's it done. Off. <laughs> I haven't done too many. I think I've done two okay. total on my channel. All but right. I think the first thing that is an entire collection that I'm personally not going to purchase, even though I, I love this person, uh, Vlada Haggerty, uh, she collaborated okay. with Smashbox on a collection. Oh, and it's all... That rose gold gorgeousness but I feel like and maybe I'm I'm just wrong here on this I feel like the price point is way higher than what the typical Smashbox products are and I would imagine okay. that's because it is the collaboration with Vlada. The packaging is mm -hmm. incredible looking and it's very Vlada. It's, you know she does the drippy lips with the with the you know it's all metallic and uh -huh. gorgeous and the, the packaging is very true to her and who she is so I get okay. it but on the whole I just feel like I don't want to invest the money in it. And I think that's where it's an anti-haul for me. Here's my question to you, because from a reviewer's standpoint, yeah. do you feel like you have to get the whole collection? Like if you're thinking mm -hmm. about reviewing it, do you feel like I, you have the need to get everything? Or like if you just talked about one thing, it would leave people kind of hanging in yeah. not enough? I mean, I feel like with, with reviews, mm -hmm. if I was gonna do a collection, I would need at least three things from the collection, I feel like in order mm -hmm. to review it on the channel. But just to try it as a consumer, I was really interested in it because I think Vlad is amazing. Okay. So I, I, I wouldn't be opposed to ordering just one product, uh -huh. but at the same time, like in order to do actual review I think I would need at least three. I feel like sometimes pressured to have everything mm -hmm. and I mean there was a time when I remember doing reviews on let's say a lip product. I had one or maybe two you know that I would get yeah. from the drugstore and I felt like I was able to provide good info based on that but now I think with PR some people are getting the PR some people are having everything and right. then it's like okay 
if I want to rival that amount of information, I need to have everything too. And what if I didn't get it in a package? So I, I think it just, you have to kind of go by how interested am I truly in this? Yes. And kind of be guided by that yes. so, because to buy that whole collection, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> and and, and each really individual is. thing is quite a bit. So are you ready for my first yes, one, Yes, I'm ready for your first one. Okay. Here's my first one. It's the Lash Stash to Go set mm. from Sephora. You might be thinking, hmm, why that? All right. It's a set of mini mascaras, five minis, high-end brands. And I think, this is what I've realized over a few years using makeup, I think the little mascaras are a totally different experience from the full sizes. It's a big brush in a small tube, and I, I have felt I've had drastically different experiences with the full size of a same mascara. That's a really good point. And as a reviewer, we need to have a genuine experience of the full size, I feel like, a lot. Because I think mm -hmm. a lot of people, some of the, the minis, you don't have access to a mini except for in a set. They don't sell yeah. the minis. So if we have an experience with a mini and we pass that information to you and you buy a full size and it's a different. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe not every mascara has that, that drastic you know, situation, but then mm -hmm. there are some mascaras where they size their minis so squatty and the brush, like for example, there's a Bobbi Brown one in here. The, the brush is quite frankly gigantic. Yeah. And then it's like, it's just not going to be the same experience. And if you want to use that for maybe a couple weeks and think you can, you know, form some opinions after that time, I really don't think it's anywhere close to the same experience you're going to have with a full size tube. Yeah, and I think so that that's an tricky. interesting point that I never thought of was that the the way the product collects around the brush in mm -hmm. a small packaging is going to be different than the way it collects around the brush mm -hmm. in a larger packaging because it's not like it's a complete liquid in there. You mm -hmm. know, if you feel it when you spin a mascara wand inside of a tube, you can feel the space. Right. So that lack of space is going to impact. I never thought of it like that before. And the whole brush is passing through like in a full size, yeah. you know, potentially several, a couple inches maybe of space to pull through. And yeah. then when the brush is really basically nearly the same length as the tube it's living in, Right. I, I don't feel like it's an accurate representation. That's interesting. So. That's particular to us as reviewers, mm -hmm. where somebody that isn't reviewing makeup and wants to have a year's worth of mascara mm -hmm. could could potentially get that with this kit. Mm -hmm. You know, so I feel like there isn't definite market for this type of product because if you can stretch one mascara for three months, if you can stretch one of those minis, you know, which I have in the past stretched a mini for three months, mm -hmm. and then you could potentially have a lot of mascara for a very That's low right. cost, and you do get a full size mascara of whichever one you choose that you like at no cost. You get a voucher in there. Right. Next up, I have the whole Too Faced Natural Collection that just came out. Mm -hmm. I decided I'm just not getting anything from that line, and the big reason why is I feel like it's great for someone that is starting off in makeup or has a you know nine to five where they just need natural looks all of the mm -hmm. time but for me personally I feel like I don't need any of that in my life like I have the original Too Faced Natural Love Palette yeah. or the was it the Natural Love or the Natural, the natural eye. eye the Natural mm -hmm. Eyes Palette I do have the Natural Love as well the the big one whatever yes. the big one I have that one um, but I just felt like I just it, there set. wasn't anything that wowed me in it, even though I was tempted by the lipsticks. Because mm -hmm. I feel like Too Faced lipsticks are so underrated. I feel like nobody really talks about them. The La Creme line and yeah. then the new ones that came from the Peach line, I actually really, really liked those. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought about maybe getting some of the lipsticks, but I was like, do I really need another <laughs> new lipstick? Like, I've got so many, and I probably won't review them for the channel, so I just decided to pass on the whole collection. Well, you know, I think... it's those eyeshadow palettes, the natural eye, like they, they switched up like a shade in yes. there. And then the mattes was changed in my opinion, not for the better. Cause I reviewed those and I, I just really was into the original natural matte. Right. And I just was not jiving with some of the ways they switched it up. But the face palette, what do you yeah, think about the face palette, Jen? It's cute. What do you think about the face I palette? I think it's really the cute. The face palette's really good. Well, do you own it? Yeah, let me grab oh, it. Okay. All right. It's definitely cute. I have to say, I love the print in it. I mean, the print is absolutely Lace. gorgeous. 
in it. Lace, the lace print. runs throughout the whole collection. Uh, oh, it's got a smell. It's yeah. got like a light. It's it doesn't. It's smell not like, like the chocolate exactly. No, the chocolate bar stuff. It doesn't smell like any of the other products. It's, it's got a almost a light floral kind of. to it. Yeah, it's beautiful. To me, it's one hundred percent wearable. Although it's it's kind of that convenience factor of okay, it's all in one palette. That's handy. Yeah. Although if we're if you're taking a really hard look at it, you might have you know your pinky toned highlight mm. or that color of blush on its own or a bronzer yeah. sort of like that. So, and I'm curious how this would work on multiple skin tones. Mm -hmm. Like this pink is very very bright. So love it. Yeah, <laughs> love it. Fresh. Fre <laughs> that's your fresh as a daisy pink. There you go. Like, but for <laughs> someone that's really really pale, like mm -hmm. maybe this might be too. Like they'd have to be really really light with it. Yeah, you, you'd then, have to be kind of light. All of these blushes, I they call this like a bronze bronzing okay. veil, this tropic like it's hot, but it's actually, to me, like a really yeah. dusty bronze pink mix right. blush. Right. And, and they're all, you'd have to be kind of light handed with. Yeah. If, and then for deeper skin tones, I feel like mm -hmm. these would get just lost most likely. Let um, us know. If yeah, definitely let us know. Like maybe this one might give a nice color because it's got that like mauve tone to it. Yeah. Like I can see that might be, ni might be nice, but I don't know. If you have a deeper skin tone, I would love to know how this works on you if you've mm -hmm. tried it. One thing that I think they did right in changing up like their sort of palette style. This mm. is durable seeming oh, like gorgeous. as can be. I mean, doesn't that feel solid to you? It does. In a, it does. Going and it's not the... popping up super easily either. Mm. And I didn't realize on the packaging that it almost looks like the words are floating off. Right. It's really that's a, that's a good observation. Like if you kind of lay it flat, you see sort of a yeah. clear layer. There's almost. a shadow mm -hmm. on, on the white behind. The light actually goes through and leaves a shadow. Like it's a cool that detail. Is really neat. I In like conclusion, it. Jen's thinking about it. <laughs> That no, is maybe absolutely not. Right. Maybe I'm, you know, I like it more now than I did before I saw it in person. I will give it that. Here's my next thing. It's the Natasha Denona Tropic Eyeshadow Palette. That's on my list too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's discuss. It's on Sephora's yes. website. It's $129. So I mm -hmm. think, I mean, y you want to do your research on this. Maybe if you're thinking mm -hmm. about it, watch some people who have reviewed it, tried it, everything. Mm -hmm. To me, here's just my reasoning in a nutshell. I think there's pretty colors in here just to look at the palette. It's appealing. But I think I need something to anchor the palette in, a, in terms of a dark matte because there's a, a seemingly a lot of shimmer, even in the dark shades here. Dark mattes are a bright, shimmery shadow's best friend. It's not because I'm saying, oh, I really wish I could create a dark, smoky eye out of that. It's just you sometimes need the little bit of darkness to pull in, to layer up, and to make those bright shades shine and look their most profound. Now, Natasha Denona can do whatever she wants, obviously, oh, yeah. but that's my reasoning in, in choosing to not get it. So. Right, and I think that maybe that might be better for like a makeup artist who already has a kit and already mm -hmm. has that, you know, that one dark brown over on the side. And I think that maybe, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the same as Viseart, but that she kind of targeted toward makeup artists at first. So that mm -hmm. might've been the logic of why, like maybe she's not going the complete palette route. But my logic was, is that I actually swatched it in store last week and I was oh, not super impressed. Uh, especially the the, what like did you the, think? the purple and the, I swatched like the bottom row because of course that one looks the most interesting to me like that's the most different that's why I would buy it mm -hmm. um and it, it just it seemed like it seemed a little chalky like just from swatching it okay. in the store I was very surprised because I do like Natasha Denona shadows it wasn't 129 dollars for me um but I didn't try it on the eyes of course I didn't actually you know use it so I can't judge it mm -hmm. completely but at that point after doing those quick swatches I decided that it was something I was just going to pass on. But yeah, I think the color selection, like you were saying, I think that, that matte brown would have been really nice. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of shades in there. This is one thing that drives me nuts about palettes is that they, they sometimes will put shades that are very similar, just to tone up or a tone down. Like, a, 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 why? Why? Yeah. Like, because on the eyes, they're not going to look that much different. Exactly. It's going to so, sheer out to some extent, even when you do pack it on. You exactly. know, it's going to look a little less than what, what you look at in the palette. Exactly. And so some of that stuff, I thought, well, maybe if I saw it in person, those 
those look more, those look different. Yeah. But you probably yeah, but came they, away thinking it was kind yeah, of Yeah, but I think like, yeah, exactly. So com combining our mm -hmm. ideas, you know, maybe replacing one of those mid-tone creamy shades with a dark matte brown mm -hmm. would have really brought the palette together. I think that would have been good. In conclusion, Jen and I are going to start up a business where we just get sent all the potential palettes <laughs> in the world and we just yes. tell them how to make it. Yep, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And there's actually a YouTube channel called Makeup Struggles that needs to make even more videos. That's what she does is she redesigns palettes. So she, she, really gi and she gives her opinion. Idea. It's a really fun idea. All right, so my next thing is the Maybelline Lemonade Craze eyeshadow palette. I almost put that on my list. I mean, I feel like with this, I, when I heard Maybelline was coming out with a lemonade palette, I was so excited. I was like, that is going to be so cool. I like lemonade. And then I saw it, and it was like, wah, wah, wah. Like, what? Really? Is this lemonade? I, I, it doesn't say lemonade to me. It you says know? lemonade in, in one very small way to me. Yes, very small. I mean, I guess they've got a little pink lemonade in there. There's that one shade in there, that lemon craze shade, that makes me go, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then maybe mixing it with the strawberry lemonade mm -hmm. shade. But other than that, like, I just, it's not wowing me the way that I hoped that it would. How much are they charging for this they guy? They are you charging $13.99. Ninety-nine. We've got yeah. eight, nine, ten, twelve colors. A lot of basic. Like I mean, if you if you kind of cover up that one pretty yellowy shade, there's a lot of basics in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was. I'm just not sure. I feel like ultimately I might get it for review purposes, mm -hmm. but in terms of of genuine like like I've been a lot more interested in things mm -hmm. than this, you yeah. know. And, and I think there should have been a little bit more of a like a citrusy. Yeah, pop in this, you absolutely. Know? Just absolutely. a little more. Maybe even throwing like a limeade in there. A limeade. Might have been fun, you know. A and cherry limeade. Yeah, I'm curious because Dominique Cosmetics is coming out with a lemonade palette and I really hope she knocks it out Ooh. of the park. I do. I'm looking forward to it. Interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Here's one, Jen, from the Ulta website and it's from Cover FX and it's the Gold Bar Highlighting Palette. I almost put that on my list too. I just... <laughs> here's the thing. Highlighting palettes. They're everywhere, and they all kind of look like this. They do. And I'm sure, like, $39, it probably feels great, it probably looks good, like, it probably makes your cheeks shiny and nice, but so do so many things. And I just right. feel like it's kind of odd that it's coming into the game at this point, because there's been right. so many things kind of formatted this way, right. and just, that's my thought. And I feel like I cover know. effects can do better. You know, they, they put out some really unique products, some really creative products. They, and yeah, I feel they like certainly that is have not them. up to what cover effects can do as far as the shade selection. I feel like mm -hmm. there's so much more creativity than that. And it's kind of like, oh, okay. Um, but again, maybe good for somebody that's just wanting to try a highlighter palette, maybe has never bought a highlighter mm -hmm. palette. Maybe that would be good for them. Um, mm -hmm. For me, it's it's... I just kind of glazed over it. I mean, and that was what I was kind of trying yeah. to, as I was thinking through what am I going to talk about here, yeah. I thought, what are the things that when I see it on a website, I just kind of like, honestly, don't even stop, really. Yeah. And so that was one of those things. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another one, this actually kind of reminds me of something I already own, which is why I definitely would be on my no. Uh, this is a Laura Geller Southampton Classic Face Palette, and it mm. reminds me a lot of the Lorac Mint Palette that I got years ago oh, that I have. That, um, that is exactly what that is, Jen. Very, very similar, yeah. and I already own that, so this being so similar would be a no. Um, I'm also not the biggest fan of Laura Geller's pressed products. I feel like she's great baked products for mm -hmm. baked highlighters or baked eyeshadows like I feel like those are her strong point I don't feel like the pressed formula is my favorite so that one would be a no for me for those two reasons mostly. It's so funny you bring up that mint palette because that was a mm -hmm. while back it was but I see I look at that and now that's what I see because mm -hmm. I, I really remember that one so yeah yeah. Good point good Thanks. point okay <laughs> wet and wild midnight mermaid box oh gosh yeah okay um <laughs> Mermaids, yes, I am in support of mermaids. I'm not anti-mermaid. However, I just, this is an example of something where if you look at what they've put out here on Ulta's website, it looks pretty all together. It's a thing that if you set it up on your table, it will look nice on display, but I'm not in reality probably going to be picking out that emerald green liquid cat suit for my lips and 
going about my day. Like it's just not going to feel right to me. And they've got several eyeliners, several liquid eyeshadows, mm -hmm. and then a um, highlighting bar, they call it. And it's going to cost close to $30. That may be a color scheme that some people are like, yes, finally. Absolutely. But for me, I'm not. I think that some people, that's just their thing is mm -hmm. these, you know, really bright, un unusual, I'll put quotes around that, colors for lips, greens and blues. Yeah, and richer colors like that. like that. I did break down and I did get the highlighting bar that's in there. I do own that. And I've tried it and I like it with the right look, but it's got that thing that doesn't quite look natural about it. So I have I to wondered be because that. it looks cream there. Yeah, I but. mean it's definitely not cream. It's mm -hmm. got like an iridescent shift to it where it definitely sits on the skin and doesn't blend into the skin as much as I would like. Okay. And it's I don't know, it just it stands out mm -hmm. like the rest of the collection. It's very appropriately put in that collection. And that isn't as me like you were saying about mm -hmm. you. It's not as me as I would yeah. You know, it's just it's not for pretty. Me. It looks like a just a cool looking assortment mm -hmm. of things like to, you know, set yeah, oh, out yeah. and play with and, yeah. and whatever, but I just day to day wear right. is are any of those pieces gonna become like essentials to me? Fun for here or there, but not for like everyday life. Okay, I've got one that I'm kind of on the fence about. It's 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 anti haul for now, but I'm kind of on the fence. The BH Cosmetics Weekend Festival twenty color palette. Because I've seen some gorgeous looks created mm -hmm. with this. Do I want it? Do I not want it? I, I ordered know. it. You did? I ordered oh, okay. it. I don't right. have it yet. I don't have it yet, okay. but I ordered it. Well, you'll have to tell me how you like it, and maybe that'll push me over the edge yeah, for it. Because I do like the colors. I do. And, and some of the looks I've seen are just incredible with this. And I think it would be fun to play with. I think that, you know, that again, that bottom row that's really drawing me in, you know, the mustardy yellow mm -hmm. and, the, and the lime green, and then pairing that with maybe the pink and the purple or, yeah, you know, and, and then using, kind of like shaming. you were saying about that brown anchoring it this mm -hmm. brown is they've given you a matte they've brown it that. looks like yeah and they've they've done that and I think that that is going to be key in creating these beautiful looks and you've got that white where you could even lay that white down all over your lid to make this yes. those so bright white is important pop. yeah is important. and I just think that this there's I can think of infinite number no mm -hmm. I can't because infinite is forever so of course I can't think of infinite <laughs> amount of things because eventually I'm gonna have to stop thinking but we understand <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to say you know there's just so many choices mm -hmm. you know and and especially if, if I had a smaller collection this is something I feel like I would just play with every day for a month and never do the same look twice yeah and it's it's an experimental palette you know like it's it's giving you so much but you're not paying a lot for it so if you turn yeah. out to neglect a you know the box of row and be like, oh, yeah. it turns out that's not my thing. You don't feel immense guilt. Right. Absolutely. I mean, because it's $18. So even if you're using six of the shadows, eight of the mm -hmm. shadows out of the 20, you're still getting, that's, you know, that's, if you're using nine of the shadows, it's $2 a shadow. Breaking down the price per gram now. Add, add add my brain. <laughs> so I don't know. This is supposed to be an anti-haul. Mm -hmm. And the more I think about it, the more I think I might want it, but I think I'm going to wait for Emily's okay. I'm okay. Let it go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll let you know. Actually, here's something that I'm kind of on the fence about. Okay. I'd like to hear your take. Um, the Kim Kardashian West KKW Beauty Concealer Kit. <sighs> like, I'm just, I'm just gonna yeah. open up the floor here. Let me know in the comments section. Like, what yeah. do you think? I feel like I don't need either of the applicators, and I think. For the price of the kit, which is like, isn't that like? I think it's like eighty dollars for the kit. Yeah. And I don't want every piece of it, but I kind of want. I'm intrigued. I kind of mm. want to know how good it is. And I think everybody's got different under eyes, different levels of darkness, different texture, and so I don't always feel like I can just go by everyone's review and right and feel like I've got it figured out. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I just based on the price point and I, I just decided that it was going to be a no for me on that one. I just kind of let it go. I did get it's to a no for me. you you would make a great American. There you go. I did like, it's a no for me doll. <laughs> it's a no for me doll. Um, but I did buy the Mario palette. So I'm working on reviewing that okay. and I've only used it twice at this point so I don't have a review for it yet but it is coming to the channel but um, but I decided that was the the piece that was the most intriguing to me from mm -hmm. her collection okay. and I decided I wanted to choose like I, I mean at that price point 
and from basically what I've from what I've heard from different reviews that it may not live up to the price point. I kind okay. of was like, okay, which one am I going to invest in? Which one am I going to invest my time mm -hmm. in? So I chose the palette, and that was why I chose not that one. It wasn't because I thought it looked bad or I thought it was something I couldn't use. It was mm -hmm. just one or the other, and I chose the eye palette. I'm, I'm leaning toward no on it. I mean, I could be swayed. Um, if there's a lot of interest, maybe in the comments section. This one, the, Fen the new Fenty Beauty products. The body lava. Oh yeah, and the fairy. I'm bomb, not getting those, but I, I didn't. I didn't include those in this. I'm You're not, not getting, getting those either. I watched Jackie Ina's review <laughs> of it, and she. If you don't know Jackie, she's amazing. Um, but I watched her review of it, and I was thinking. That looks gorgeous on Jackie, but where in the world do I need to wear a glitter sparkle all over my body? Like, where where am I going? I'm going to the bus stop to pick up my kids from the bus stop. I'm going out to dinner with my husband, which maybe it might look good, but can I just use a highlighter that I already own? And whatever the texture of that highlighter may be, mm -hmm. it can be used on the body. Like, you yes. can dust powders and look dewy. Yeah. You know, dewy glowing wonderfulness Absolutely. all over just and with those things. Yeah, I mean, I think if I if I was in my like early twenties and I lived at the beach and I was constantly, you know, walking around with you know like a deeper skin, like I feel like it looks beautiful on on tan to deeper skin. I think that body glow uh -huh. really is shown off, and I feel like if that was me, I'd be all about it. It would be mine. I would get it. But being a much lighter and not going out in the sun and not having these beach experiences all the time and just yeah. the occasional date night, I don't think it's worth it for me and my life and my lifestyle. You're thinking about the atmosphere you're taking that product exactly, into. Exactly. Exactly. Is it a need? Yeah. And probably not. You know, that's what I'm saying for me. So. Yeah. It just, it's, it doesn't fit me enough to invest in it. What else was I going to talk about? I'm kind of running out of yeah, things. Yeah, me too. Jen. I'm running out of things too. Um, but I do have something that I, I feel like it's been online for a while. I feel like I've looked at it for some time and mm. continually not gotten it. And it's the Storybook Cosmetics, um, all of their fancy shaped brushes. Uh, in particular, I've pulled up the What's in a Name Rose brushes. $55. They're going to give you four brushes and a bag. Um, they look dense. They they look cute, but I just how do you functionally hold that and put on your makeup? That's what it's I want to really know. It's really skinny. It's, it's really looking. skinny, and then it's fat at the top. I'm wondering if you own these. How do you hold it in order to functionally put it on? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm wondering. Like, would you have to hold it at the bulb part in order to like buff it? Because I feel like the skinny part it would. I feel like especially people with arthritis in their hands might really struggle with yeah. like, I mean, it's a small it's a small thing to grip. Yeah. And they're cute. Right. But some things like that, like I've been sent um for example the mermaid brushes from okay. Tarte. I have those. Okay. And they're cute, but I feel the same like I've got my old faithful brushes. I've got just my certain core brushes, and it's very hard for me to move away from my core brushes yeah. and welcome new brushes yeah. in and be like I'm going to put this in the rotation. I'm really, I need to get better about that because there are mm -hmm. things I'd like to try and, and stuff, but when it's that important look or that important night out, you just want to use the safe brushes. Yeah. You need the brushes to come through for you. Yeah. Yeah. Bottom absolutely. line. Absolutely. I'm not sure I trust these brushes. Yeah. I mean, I, for me, it's all about the grip of it. And am I going to be able to comfortably and mm -hmm. functionally hold it? Because if I can't comfortably hold the brush, then I'm not going to be able to get the look that I want. And you're going to drop the brush. And I'm going to drop the brush. And then it's going to break. And, you know, my mermaid wing is going to fall off. And, and not that mermaids have wings, but, you know, the mermaid fin, not the wing. You know what I'm trying to say here. Yeah. I, I've anti hauled I, not anti hauled but I've, I've You've been mentally, anti them. Uh... Mentally anti hauled them for okay. a while. The last one that I had on here was a Kat Von D I Am Divine palette and um, you know there are some definitely interesting shades in here and the reason why I kind of decided against this one was because of reviews that I saw for it. Um, there's a mm -hmm. channel, uh, his name is Nady, and he swatched them and he talked about the textures and really there were only a couple of them that I felt stood out as something I wanted to own. Mm -hmm. And if those were sold in singles, I would totally get the singles. And mm -hmm. especially after we did the eyeshadow bingo over on my channel and uh, uh, Emily used some of the Kat Von D singles and they yeah. were gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. She's got them yeah. on now. So that even convinced me more that if these came out in singles, I'd be all about mm -hmm. it. Like the, the greens and the blues, uh, definitely. But it's a pretty spectrum. It is. But and I, I feel like there's so much more tendency toward 
copper and yes. And, and like, I'm, I'm thankful she tried to do something different she, yeah, and she's, she's good at that. But I don't think that the majority of these, I don't think this would be something I would reach for as a palette. So. This was such a good idea to do. This was all Jen's idea. And then it was also her idea to do the bingo, which on her channel, that was, you, you want to adopt this idea and do this <laughs> with yourself or with friends at home like it's really cool and I am so grateful to her for coming here and I'm not gonna cry I'm sorry um but uh she she took an interest in me and and wanting to do this and I value her so much and she is a person who you need to find if you haven't found her yet you need to watch her videos, support her channel. Um, she is, puts her heart and soul clearly into what she does. And I I, I just feel really honored that you wanted to be here and do this with oh, me. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, and I'm it, sorry. I'm sitting here <laughs> with Emily Noel 83 and having oh. her tell me that is the biggest honor. I mean, really and truly. I mean, she's been an icon on in the beauty space since the beginning. And, you know, she's my idol. She's who I've looked up to since the beginning of my channel so I mean this has been an incredible experience and thank you so much for inviting me into your home and allowing me to come over and play with you because we've just we've just had a big play date is what this I has bet, been yes. and it's just been a blast it's been so much fun we've been so just let you. loose in the makeup room to talk yeah. about and do whatever we wanted to do yeah. and this is the kind of person yeah. you like you'd, you'd like to just have her as your neighbor <laughs> just like can I just run over there and talk about yeah. makeup with somebody real quick thank you thank you Jen thank you, you're wonderful oh you're um, wonderful so great having you here and thank, thank you. you guys so much for watching hope you enjoyed the anti haul if you want to see more of it here you know let me know let Jen know yeah. and we will talk to you guys later bye, bye. <laughs>